I, I have to apologize for the kind of crappy camera angle I got going on here. Um, I just, I, I got so much shit in here, I can't put the camera where I want to, and I don't feel like moving stuff around. So earlier, um, I had started on making this, uh, this patch panel. Um, you saw me make a template. Uh, you saw me make, um, use my Lancaster shrinker and stretcher to make <laughs> to make this piece. Um, this piece is shit. It ended up in the trash um, because uh, it doesn't fit. And not only does it not fit, um, it way doesn't fit. And the reason it doesn't fit is because I'm a dope. And while I did make a pattern, my pattern sucked. Um, my pattern was not um, my pattern was not very good. I got ahead of myself, which happens all the time. Uh, and this piece is scrap. All right, the reason this piece is scrap is because the bottom of the quarter actually is flat. Uh, I didn't take notice of that when I made the pattern. Um, I didn't take notice of that when I made the pattern. So I made the, the new part to match the pattern I made, which is this one, which has got way too much curvature to it. Uh, I didn't realize how bad it was until I put this bend at the bottom here, um, until I put this bend in. Um, and this bend is what is my, uh, is my witness mark against the bottom of the quarter panel. So this is way too bent. It should be flat like that. Whenever you do a sheet metal project, buy twice as much as you need because chances of throwing something away are pretty good. Now, I'm not going to totally shit can that part because I have some other pieces I need to, need to make, but it, it, it's definitely not, uh, um, not going to be usable for this. Now, I, this part is, uh, this, fit, this fits actually really good right now for, for me, for what I'm doing here. Uh, you can't really see in the video, but uh, it matches very well to the piece, the panel that I, the piece I cut out as the re uh, replacement panel. The other thing um, I had mentioned earlier in the video was a railroad track. Yeah, I just blew my nose on my own floor. I'm so irritated by this project, I can't wait for it to be done. Um, and um, it's my floor. Uh, so I have my piece of trusty railroad track here, uh, which, shockingly enough, um, the radii on the edge of the railroad track here matches the radius of the inside of this bend. Now, not perfectly, mind you, but in an area along the track where I can actually um, feed on it. Oh my god, railroad track is so heavy. Um, so the radius here, the, this is cool too, this is a factory cut end, um, and then this is, this is a machine cut end. This is actually a really nice piece of railroad track. Uh, there was a point in time when this was polished up real nice, but over time it just kind of started to rust again a little bit, so I had to put some paint on it. Um, if you were doing real fine work, I've mentioned before, this should be polished up like a, you know, polished up. It's not. Oh, that's where I dropped it on my foot. So, uh, for the sake of the video here, I'm going to swap it around this way. Uh, I was actually working the other way uh, so I could put my foot on the railroad track. So, you can see this edge here is a little cattywampy. Um, I'm going to live with that for the time being because I still need to, um, I still need to weld it in. Uh, it still needs to be welded in place and then once it's welded to the quarter panel I can um, uh, I can use a hammer and dolly to to get it to its final shape the Lancaster shrinker um, you know gathered up the metal here really nice and quick I got a nice bend there's a little crack in it but that's okay I'll weld it back up um, the Lancaster shrinker can only gather so much metal before it starts folding back on itself and cracking um, it work hardens uh, it's just the nature of the beast. Uh, there's, that's why there's a whole bunch of different ways to shrink and stretch metal. Um, let me see here. Uh, so the other thing I have to do is I have to actually 
completely trim this to fit. So this piece is way bigger than I need. The, the actual patch panel itself, um, and it's, you're never going to see it because it, I, don't, I don't know what I did with my magic marker. The patch panel itself it really only comes to about here and um, about here. So the hole, and actually it runs all the way down, but the hole here is only this big and this is all going to be scrap. I'm going to trim this off. Now, um, my original plan for this was to uh, put this piece in perfectly along this line here um, and uh, butt weld it together, hammer and dolly it, make it look beautiful and perfect with no body filler. Um, and this falls under the I don't feel like doing that anymore. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to trim this pretty close to the edge. It won't be perfectly close to the edge. I'm going to stick it on the inside here. Uh, I'm going to stick it on the inside and um, I'm going to butt well. I'm going to weld it that way. Uh, and that's really not the recommended way to do it. Uh, the recommended way to do it is how I said, which is to cut it. I still might do it. I, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Is to cut out the, this patch perfectly. Ah, you know what? I, I might do it that way. Uh, cut out this patch so it perfectly fits the hole that you cut out, and then um, and then stitch weld it together, hammer and dolly the weld till it's smooth, uh, and then you're good to go. And the reason why I would rather do it that way is so I don't have. Uh, basically what it's going to be almost a quarter of an inch of filler. Um, this is kind of a high stress area, believe it or not. This, uh, even with the uh, inner fender in, the, this flutters. Okay, You don't realize how much a car moves when it's going down the road, but this flutters all the time. And it's constantly moving when the car is in motion. And like I said, you don't see it. Uh, but it's happening. It's always vibrating, and, and no matter how flexible the filler is, no matter how good your weld is, eventually it's gonna it's gonna fail. Uh, if you do what I just said, which is to back to stick it in like that, weld it up, and fill it with filler. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna do that that way. Now that I think about it, this patch fits so nicely um, that I, I I really think that it would be it wouldn't do it wouldn't do the patch justice. It wouldn't do the job justice if I did it that way. The bummer is I've got four of them to do. Uh, this is number one of four. Uh, I'm not going to record all of them. Some of the patches are a lot smaller than, than this one. This one's a pretty, this is I think the worst one. Uh, when you're dealing with smaller patches, the Lancaster Shrinker is a lot easier to use and so is the, the railroad track. Um, it, just, it just makes it a lot easier to do it. With, um, when you're not dealing with a big piece of sheet metal. There's other tools to do it that way. I'm just making small patch panels. So, the next step is, is to get some clamps out, clamp it. I have to deburr this edge. Uh, I cut this out with a saw, with a, with a whizzy wheel saw. It created a hell of a burr on the edge. I gotta get rid of that burr. Um, so I can make the mating surfaces nice and tight and flush and, and pretty. Uh, once I get it welded in, once I get it stitch welded in to where I want it, um, I'll then be able to, or at least tack weld it in where I want it. I'll be able to work it with a hammer and dolly on the truck itself um, to get it to the shape that I need it to be in. Um, much easier. Uh, when you're working off the truck or you're working off of your workpiece, it's, sometimes it's a little difficult. It, it dances around. It, it's it's kind of difficult to get this radius just perfect. And you can do that when it's on the truck. And you can start with the dolly up here and you can work the radius around um, that way. Okay, I'm back. Uh, there's a little bit of a, a time warp here. So I, I fiddled with this a little bit more on the, uh, on the railroad track uh, to get this fit a lot nicer. Uh, the other thing I did was I fit the outer um, wheelhouse and I fit the inner wheelhouse. 
Uh, so this gets a, a like a plastic uh, mud catcher basically on the inside here which also acts as a support for this panel um, which I'm gonna have to put back in uh, so I got a really nice fit here um, I will note that the wheel well opening uh, the wheel flare actually comes all the way out to here so this this is great for me um, as a as for the repair because that means that this uh, this angle isn't super duper critical uh, the radius on the uh, wheel well opening itself now if this was a restoration project if this was something very um, that needed to be perfect like uh, I don't know anything other than this uh, that doesn't have the something that covers this radius I'd have to spend a lot more time making this radius um, perfect I, I don't need to do that so I clamp I used all my clamps here you can never have enough clamps to hold this in place. Now, I'm going to leave this one in here for the time being, but I'm going to take these off. Uh, they don't need to be there anymore because what I did now remember I made this I made this patch panel oversized um, and I fit it to on the inside. Um, I did that knowing that I was going to be using these tech screws to actually hold the panel in place. So I can take these off. Now, that's it. The panel's held in the the patch for panel is held in place by the uh, by these tech screws, except for this one right here. Um, I don't. I'm not going to put one here. Uh, so now the next thing I'm going to do, and this is something that I've been doing for a while. Um, I uh, I want to say I saw it done on television, or I saw it done or read it in a book. Um, and I'm gonna go and say maybe Boyd Coddington's Hot Rod Body Work book. I'm not sure. Uh, there's a couple of books I read back in the late '90s. Uh, and early 2000s about shaping and forming sheet metal projects. So the other one could have been uh, TM Technologies. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my uh, venerable whizzy wheel here and I'm going to cut along this line. Okay. So I, I normally I would use a, a little bit thinner blade um, but I am not going to just because I, I don't feel like getting up and putting a new blade on. I, I have, have these that are actually a little bit thinner than this. Um, when I do the, the main patch panel, I'll probably use a thinner blade. But I'm going to do the main patch panel the exact same way I'm going to do this one. Um, I don't... I, I could, in theory, right now, just zip a weld around here and be done with it uh, and that's it you know done but the problem is I have all this excess material on the inside now I could take the panel off trim it to fit much closer uh, and do the same thing but I don't necessarily want to do that because like I mentioned earlier there's a lot of flutter in this panel uh, I would rather do it this way plus it's my truck and I, I kind of want um, I kind of want to do it this way. At the end of the day, what's going to end up happening is there's going to be body filler in here, uh, but not a ton. Um, and the inside is going to be heavily caulked along the joints. Uh, heavily caulked, and this whole inside panel here is going to be heavily undercooked. Uh, so let's get cutting and welding. So I have my welder set uh, to the same way I had it set with the other... Uh, uh, for all my other weldings, it's the same material. Um, it's the same material. Whoops. Now, when I cut this, it immediately jumped into position. Okay? So now I'm going to take these two screws out. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to take those two out. Okay. 
impact gun is being cantankerous. <clears throat> I'm going to take the, on the inside here, which you can't see, and I picked up every fucking thing I thought I needed for this. Son of a bitch. Uh, any tool can be the right tool. Unless that tool is cursing too. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you gotta mess with me, aren't you? Okay. Now I've bent that other piece out of the way. I'm gonna put another clamp on the inside here, another one of these plug welding clamps. I'm gonna make it pretty tight. That nah, was making my life difficult anyway. All right, so my first tack is gonna go right there. My first tack's gonna go here. My second tack is gonna go there. Perfect. Oops. Now I'm going to finish, I'm going to do some more cutting. I'm going to take my dolly. I'm going to use this curved side. Burning smell is my glove. <clears throat> now you gotta remember to peel away the uh, uh, the other sheet metal because if you don't you'll accidentally weld it together. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. Hammer and dolly. Stick that booger right in there. Give it a little tippity tap. I should mention, don't ever stick your hand inside of here when you're running the MIG, especially uh, 
if you got a hell of a gap like that, that wire will run through red hot and blow right through your finger and your glove. Uh, that's another one. Don't ask me how I know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna have to put another tech screw in. Uh, I should add that I, you can actually weld this from the inside too. Uh, this is like the most ideal spot in the world to do a repair like this. Oh, by the hair of my chinny chin chin, I pulled that one off. Almost welded it to it. I may actually have welded it. Shit. Yeah, I did. Fuck. All right. It's full of fucking sparks. Ah. Now, take one for the team, kid. All right, let's get that one out of there. One, two, so, th this is the uh, this is the excess I cut off of the inside. Now I'm gonna put my my plug weld clamp back up in here. This is the one I think I said I should throw in the trash. But, oh well. So now this is a nice uh, this joint's nice and smooth, nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. I got a little bit to. Oh, that one broke. Uh, I'm gonna put a little bit here on this. Put this on the end here. I'm actually gonna turn the heat down a little on the welder. I'm gonna go from. Uh, oh, we're just gonna click it down one more, and then check, see if I can get a little bit less, a uh, little bit less heat. Um, yeah, I, I just need a little less heat. I'm gonna take them off of there. Perfect. Perfect. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. I like it a lot. This is cool. Ooh. Ow. 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 Right. Nice shoe. So, uh, I just welded up my other holes. Now, I'm going to let this cool off for a minute because it's getting hot. Uh, my joint uh, my joint here on the inside is, is looking pretty good. Let's see here. Right, so, that's looking, that's looking toasty right there. Let's see. Yeah, that looks good. These are all nice and flat. What I might do to make my life a little easier is I might actually weld the this from the inside because it's it's easier to weld down than it is to weld against gravity. Uh, that's just that's just the way it is. Uh, so let's see what we got cooking inside here. Yep. Okay. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Uh, like I said, I, this has to cool. Um, when it's cold enough to touch, it's uh, it's cool enough to keep working. I'm gonna put another one there, and I'll put one there. And then I'm gonna go on the inside and weld it from the inside to the outside, just because it's it'll be less clean up on the outside, and I'm not overly worried about the inside. Uh, like I said, it's gonna get a significant amount of uh, uh, sealant in there. You'll never see it. I won't have to clean it as much. All right. that from the inside too. Oh, you know what? Ah! Dumbass. I gotta clean the inside. That's why I'm getting some black back splatter. I need to switch hammers. But I'm not going to right this second.
So we're gonna let that cool for a minute. We don't want it to buckle the panel any more than we have to. Uh, I should mention that this type of repair is totally impractical for a production facility. Um, this is not, uh, yeah, if we were doing a production job, this is not how this would get done. The other thing I should mention is that, uh, and I'm sure I'm going to catch hell for it, uh, this actually should be TIG welded in. Uh, I have a TIG welder. Uh, I just, I don't, it's just not practical uh, for what I'm doing here. This is a pickup truck. This isn't a, this isn't a fucking Bentley. Or a Ferrari where you're paying $350,000 to have the car restored. All right, um, now what I was doing there uh, was I was shining the light through the inside to see where I hadn't uh, got the weld. Uh, now the other problem I'm having is this thing's jitterbugging around on me a lot. Uh, so that's, that's kind of actually really problematic when you're welding. because. I have the welder set in such a way that the metal that's actually touching the metal before it strikes its arc. So it's when it's bip, 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 every tiny little bump is starting to make it vibrate, which is when you heard that pigeon shit noise, that's what that was. Uh, I should have clamped this. I told myself I was going to clamp it. I didn't clamp it. Um, I'm going to clamp it now. Uh, but that's it. The next pi next video you see, this will be all smoothed out inside and out, and you, you won't. Uh, then we'll go from there.